Hi there and welcome into this tutorial. This tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can create a mind control ability. So what is a mind control ability? Basically what I'm going to be doing is that I have this non-playable character and I have ability that makes me able to switch his behavior tree mid game. So as you can see right now he's following me and I'm going to press a trigger that's going to change his behavior so it's going to detect which non-playable character I'm, I'm interacting with and it's going to change his behavior I have pressed it now so it should stop in, uh, following me that's mainly because he's now acts as an ally and needs to have a command to start following me so as you can see over here he has the command now he goes back to chasing me and I can make him wait here and it's going to wait because he is an ally right now He's using the behavior of a alley. And now if I trigger that event again, as you can see, I changed his behavior and now he's not going to be using the same behavior tree as before. So that's mainly what we're going to be what I'm going to be showing you how you can create this in Unreal Engine. I'm going to be using the third person template for this tutorial, and I have a companion already created. I am assuming that for this video have uh, some kind of non-playable character that you want to be using for this, some kind of enemy and things, something like that. Uh, because I'm not going to be teach how you can create that in this video, I'm going to be focusing on the mind control ability. So what is this mind control ability? Basically in Unreal Engine, you usually create, a, let's say when you create a non-playable character that can be either a companion, an enemy or anything that your character is not going to be playing with, but it's going to have some kind of behavior in the world, you're going to be setting a behavior tree. But uh, this behavior tree uh, is not something that needs to be fixed, you can change that mid-game. That's something that not that many people talk about and this is mainly what I'm going to be showing over here. So what we're going to be creating is ability that uh, when triggered in our non-playable character is going to change his behavior. So basically let's think about, let's say you have some kind of enemy and he's going to be chasing you, attacking you, dealing damage against you and there's going to be multiple of those enemies but when you use this might control ability, he's going to change the behavior tree of this uh, enemy and then suddenly he starts, he becomes some kind of companion, some kind of ally uh, to help you out in this fight. So that's mainly what I'm going to be showing you. If you want to know how I create this companion, how I made everything that I did over here, I have videos in the channels explaining everything that I did over here. Uh, explaining about behavior trees and so on and so forth. Um, but for this video, the first thing that we need to do is so basically, I uh, just uh, just to show you around. If you don't solve the other videos, I have just this uh, non-playable character that has some basic behavior. I created him as a companion, but I made a uh, enemy behavior tree as well. So he basically has this enemy behavior and he has this companion behavior. One thing that we're going to notice is that both my companion behavior and my enemy behavior is using the same blackboard. So I'm using the same blackboard for both. And the function is, is not a lot, it's just for uh, the example of in this case. But basically I have this non-playable character that's running this enemy behavior tree. But I want to create a function that's able to, let's say, change between these behavior trees. So let's go to our BP third person character and over here I have him just a basic, few basic commands that you can use to make companion fall and things like that. You, again, you can see that by watching the videos about how I create this companion and so on. But over here I'm going to right click, then I'm going to just search for a normal key, let's say the C key can be any key that you want, this is just the one that came to mind and of course you can use input actions if you want. So uh, one thing that I'm going to be using is a line trace by chain because I want to know what I'm interacting with. So just get line trace by chain over here. Then I'm going to get our follow camera. It's not going to be too much different if I use the first person template. Then from this get our word location. 
then toggle this word location at the start location then i am going to get forward vector like so multiply this uh and then right click and make it as float and in this case i think quite a bit of distance could be good for this so let's say 1000 uh, again this is up to you how much how big the distance you want to be then i'm going to be adding this uh actually this one should be the first value and this one over here yeah now place as stand the trace channel is the visibility one but you could set another trace channel as well then from this i am going to get a branch uh to see if he has hit something then i am going to break this out hit break it and then from this i am going to get from our hit actor if actor has tag because i don't want this to be interact with anything that he has hit and in my case i the tag that i gave to our my companion is an pc if you don't know how to make tags let's say i have this companion over here i can go here with our class default selected search for a tag and just place a tag over here as you can see i have this npc tag over there and that's why i am placing this over here then get another branch i am not using uh, a hand boolean here instead i'm using two branches that's mainly because if i don't do that it's going to give a error when try to check for this actor has tag then from our out hit i am going to guess to bp npc place it up here let's get our root node by double clicking it in the node like so oops let's get it down here yeah just like that now i need to create the function to change his behavior in our non-playable character that's not difficult let me show how to do that so here in our non-playable character i again i have other functions that is uh for the companion to start interaction as you can see over here i have created this early component is set by default to false but i'm not setting anywhere else and basically what it's going to do is that he is going to check if it's early or not and it's going to change behavior uh, based on that i don't have any damage system set in our player but it's mainly to show how this would work out then over here i am going to get i am going to get let's just create a custom function custom event this one is going to be let's say um change behavior three because that's mainly what we're going to be doing over here then i am going to get our alley then get a branch and this thing is going to check if it is either alley or not if it is not then I am going to be setting it to false. So let's say if it is, if it is already a uh if the case of true, then I'm going to be setting it to false. If it is not, then I am going to be setting it to true, like so, because it's going to be changing. Now let's get controller over here. And then I need to set this function in our non-playable character, actually our non-playable character controller. So let's go over here. Let's right click, get custom event. This one's going to be control change behavior, like so. Then over here, let's just guess to control, uh, actually, uh, guess to any non playable character controller. And then uh, again, you could use the interface if you want. I don't think that's going to cost uh, too much performance because it's going to be triggered only once um but uh, anyways if you want to optimize this interface would be great i just don't want to take too much time with this so let's just use a cast for both cases and then uh, over here as well and then from this i'm going to get control change behavior like that i'm actually going to have one input over here so let's get one input that he is, uh, that is basically his new value for uh, if it's alley or not, so like that. And then I am going to be getting this value from here. 
Yeah, it's going to be set, so I can just get the L into here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Compile it, save it. Now in our non-playable character, I am going to get a branch from this. And this is actually the easiest part. This is what I'm going to be using over here. As you can see, in the event begin play, he's going to be running this enemy behavior. I'm going to just be getting this. Place over here in the case of true, and uh, let's say if it is highly, uh, actually, if this is for the false, so let's just copy again, paste it over here. And if this is true, then I'm going to change his behavior to the alley to the companion behavior, like so. So, as you can see, two behavior trees, and it should be able to change between them. So in my companion behavior by default, he's going to only be following if I give him the command to follow. And in my enemy behavior, he's going to be following my companion uh, without having this command enabled. Uh, so that's mainly how I'm, going to be know how I'm going to be knowing if I change it or not. Now let's go to our BP third person and let's call the event in our BP and an unplayable character. So just get change. And a behavior tree, like so. Yeah, that should be pretty much it. Compile it, save it. Uh, in my case, I have a reference for our companion, so I didn't, didn't need it to get the hit actor. But, anyways, uh, that's pretty much it. Let's test this on our game. I have this collision box only to detect if it should start interacting or not. But by default, it's not going to be showing any interaction, only when he becomes a companion. So let's see, it's not showing anything, that's because he's an enemy. Now, I am not going to be drawn the box theory, but if it, it works, then once I hit with this ability, he should stop following me. Uh, let's see that, that. So I triggered the ability and he stopped following me. That's because now he needs a command to start following me like so and now i can give him the command to wait here and it's work fine but let's say if i trigger that event i trigger that event he is going to start following me again that's mainly because i am changing him his behavior mid game so i have yeah i got a error uh that's mainly i think it's because of the uh the behavior let's see yeah, it was because it was trying to remove the witch and it didn't have any witch at all. Man, it's not it's a minor mistake, uh, but it does not concern what we are doing over here. So basically, as you can see, we have only one uh, non-playable character and we can still make two behavior trees so that we can use this ability to change his behavior mid-game. So that's mainly the ability that I want to show you. Uh, you could expand this, of course, and make some error effect or something like that to affect multiple enemies and make all of them to go to your side. Uh, anyways, uh, you can explore it as much as you want. So that was mainly what I want to show you, how you could set this, this ability. I know that not many people uh, do complex behavior uh, for a non-playable character, and even if they do, they are not going to be doing two behavioral tweets for that, but as I said, you can use the same blackboard, so sometimes you can make that without having to make that many modifications. So anyways, uh, that's mainly what I want to show you in this video, thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Visit train.memetinteract.com and enroll into this course to get all sorts of files. Use coupon code MEMETY to enroll for free.